Hello everyone. Welcome to Tom Talks. Instead of a rant today or an interview, I'd like to pose a personal question. I suppose my question is this. Can a song be haunted? If I sound a little off today, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not feeling very well. I have a bit of a fever at the moment. It's been going around my house. I guess this question is only worth coming up with and asking if I qualified with my personal story. You see, there was a time when I first started writing my ambient music, when it started to take a dark turn. No, 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 no. I have to go back further first so that you understand. All my life, especially my childhood, I have had experiences. Rather... <sighs> uncomfortable experiences. I would see... Well, you know the... That shadow that moves in the corner of your eye and you're not quite sure what it was. And so you look and you try to see what it was, and you get that eerie feeling. Well, those shadows didn't hide from me as a child. They made themselves known. I was very frightened and affected heavily by them. I used to draw pictures of them. My parents... My parents thought that these were demons. They always told me that the angels of the Lord would protect me, and I would. I would make believe in my mind that those angels would fight these things off. And I would draw pictures for my parents to see, to convince them that that was the case, because I didn't want them to be unhappy. But in reality, the angels, they never came. I was at the mercy of these things, in my fevered, childlike imagination. And so, my life went on. I always thought, being raised in the church, the Christian church, that I was condemned to hell because I couldn't make these things go away. The angels wouldn't make them go away, calling out, calling and crying out. The name of God's Son wouldn't make these things go. And it wasn't until I made the decision myself, some time later, much much, much later in my life, to just ignore them. To ignore their presence, to ignore the times they attempted to interact with me, the times they tried to chill my body, or give me a stabbing pain, or grab me, or scream in my face, or haunt my dreams I chose, for them to not exist. And when I made that choice and I stood up to them, and I denied them even personhood, I denied them even any type of thought, I was freed. Or so I thought. It wasn't until 
I felt guided by creativity to start delving into music of a dark, ambient nature. And so, I would write. And I was very proud of my ability to orchestrate. Very, very proud of my ability to influence influence the behavior of people, to influence the way their bodies would react to sound. I was very proud of that. I had written relaxation music, I had written trance music, and now I was writing horror music, and I was very pleased with all that I was able to accomplish. But the dark ambient music seemed to come from a different place. A very different place. Less cerebral, more passionate. And so I would write and create, and I was pleased with what I had made. Now I have to take a little bit of a left turn out of what I'm talking about to tell you about my television monitor. It's an old monitor given me by my father who braved the crowds of Black Friday. It's a plasma TV, only 720. 720 resolution, not price, mind you. Thank goodness. No one should pay that much for a monitor unless it's 4K. Of course, I'm talking about future things. Of course, I'm getting off track. Because I don't want to keep talking about this. Because even now, while I'm talking about this, I feel it. I feel them. I, I feel the interaction in my spine. I feel... I feel them off just out of my sight to the left and the right in this room that I'm recording in. And I hate that feeling. So, I'm gonna press onward, because this story needs to be told. I had this television and it served me well for a really long time, um, until it started, uh, to just degrade in a very odd way. Um, whenever it's being used watching a movie you can't see it but when I have it on as a monitor for my computer and primarily while I am editing music the shadows seem to exist in the monitor I know it's just the plasma not working the way it should anymore but my god there are faces in that there are faces and they stare they are trying to get out of that monitor or they could be just messing with me, but they are there. And so, I tell you this so that you can understand just exactly what happened one night when I was writing. I was composing a song similar to the one you're hearing now. experimenting with sound. I'm not even sure which one it was. I know that I did load it up to YouTube in the end as an act of defiance, and I hope that I have not affected anyone by it. It's because none of this is real. I keep telling myself that none of this is real. And so it shouldn't be real for you either. The song I was working on, it affected me differently. I started to have those moments where I felt like someone was there. Someone was with me. Someone put their hand on my shoulder at one point. I thought it was my wife. I turned and no one was behind me. I heard the running of little feet. Thought it was my kids trying to stay up a little while longer past their bedtime. And yet, no kids would be found. Instead, I saw the shadows again. I saw them move. 
They responded every time I composed. They swirled about, going in and out. They wouldn't exist so long as I would force them out of existence with my mind. But yet, yet they, they would creep back in every time. And so I resolved to know that they weren't real, to say to myself, no, 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 no. This is just my mind playing tricks on me. But it wasn't until I was in the process of reviewing and mastering my track that inexplicably I heard the most horrifying sounds thunder through my headphones. It was so loud and horrifying, yet it didn't hurt my ears, it just shocked my soul. I didn't even feel like I had to pull my headphones off. It made the most horrible sound I'd ever heard, and the, the composer in me has been trying to recreate it since. It's the perfect horror sound. It's the perfect terrifying sound, and I have not been able to find it. I've not been able to recreate it in any of my compositions since, nor did it stay in the original work. There was no waveform, no indication that the sound would come. It just emanated, emanated from, from the composition, almost shaming me. My work paled in comparison to the sound, but it did chill me as well. And when I looked down at the meter, showing that it had peaked. In digital audio workstations, you can see when your waveform has peaked, it causes a distortion where the sound did not, did not distort in the ear. It didn't even sound like it peaked, although it was loud. But when I looked down, and saw that the meter had read the decibel level. The red line. Well, you tell me. You tell me. You're looking at exactly what I shot with my cell phone that night. That is not a recreation. That is not a Photoshop. I barely had the sense of mind to grab my phone that was sitting next to me and shoot the picture. Of course, I posted on my personal Facebook a joke to try to diffuse my horror. I'd posted that, oh, I guess I must be a bona fide musician in that horrible satanic Illuminati music industry. I can't wait to get my big fat checks from Dr. Dre. But no, no, I was legitimately frightened. we come to the monitor. I finished my work. I re-rendered, expecting the sound maybe to come back, hoping to record it, but no, it didn't come back. I rendered out the piece. Again, I, I don't remember which one I was even working on. I, I, it's like it's blocked in my mind now when I try to think back. All I can think back to are those moments that I experienced, those really unnerving moments. I can't remember the particulars of what song it was, but when I finished the work and closed the DAW, my monitor was heavily distorted. Imprinted, if you will, by shadows. And they stayed. They stayed as long as I looked. I knew the second I turned away and then looked back, they'd be gone. I knew it. I knew it would happen, so I stared at them. I stared at them to take them in. It was like an ever-evolving face. Faces behind faces, in front of faces, vying for attention. The shadow would shift. The plasma would ebb and flow, broken, unable to render of a proper picture without this distortion. And of course, I had to look away. 
I had to blink, I had to grab my phone to try to take a photo of it, or hit print screen. And the second, the second I did, it was gone. Just back to the minor degradation that had existed there in the first place. The shadows. The shadows around me eventually left, too. Only coming out when I bring up the event when I dwell on it. Like now, with me. And if they're with you, too, because of this, I am sincerely sorry. You'll know it. You'll know it because you'll feel a presence. You'll want to look one side or another or turn around. If you do that, they will flee. It's when you're not looking that they're there. You can feel them around you. They may be benign. They may inspire you to do something. I hope it, it too is benign. I hope, I hope if they inspire you, it's not something terrible. You should ignore them. Convince yourself they don't exist and you will not experience them any longer. I've done it, and I'm doing it now, right after I hit stop on this recording. They do not exist. They do not exist. They do not exist. But can a song be haunted?